Previously in this series, we looked at the German Flakpanzer known as the Kugelblitz. Although that tank was essentially the last German SPAA using a tank chassis of the war, it was far from the last concept to be considered. Several of these projects in particular were looking into the idea of using a Panther chassis. In today's episode, we will look into these concepts, starting with one you've likely heard of before, known as the Coelian. With skies rapidly being filled by swarms of Allied fighters and bombers, Germany was quickly realizing they needed new anti-air vehicles, and they needed them fast. Designs such as the Verbalwind and Ostwind did help with this, but more were always needed to protect from air attacks. Although most of these early vehicles used the hulls of the more outdated Panzers like the Panzer IV, the idea of using a Panther hull became an appealing one following its introduction in 1943, although some ideas began even earlier than that. The first of these proposals we'll discuss today was a design by Rheinmetall Borsig which consisted of a turret mounting four 20mm cannons. This design would not get off the ground though with not much surviving information about it. Judging by the fact that this was little more than a concept though, we can presume that it was not viewed favorably compared to other designs. The next and probably most well known design was that of the Coelian. Although that is the name we commonly associate with the vehicle nowadays, and it is often labeled with this name in source material, the full name of it was actually 3.7cm Flechschwilling auf Panther Fargestell 341. It is important to mention here that although the Coelian name does seem to have been attached to this vehicle, it was reportedly never used by the Germans during the war. As its official designation suggests, this vehicle was to be armed with two 3.7cm Flak 341 cannons which were a new experimental armament. The design most of us know today is the one created by Rheinmetall. Their concept for a turret mounted the two cannons in an enclosed turret and was eventually demonstrated with a wooden mock-up. This mock-up gives us a good look at what the final vehicle may have looked like, although the shape is a bit different from the design shown in the blueprints. The turret from the blueprints is more angled on the front compared to the flat-faced one in the mock-up. Most likely, this was just done to simplify the construction of the mock-up and not what the final turret shape was. As for the protection of this turret, it reportedly would have 70mm on the front, 80mm on the mantlet, 70mm on the side, and 40 on the rear. Further details on the crew arrangement of the vehicle or its mobility are unclear as no steel prototype was ever made and the design was cancelled in favor of one armed with a 5.5cm cannon which was being worked on. With the final weight being estimated at around 40 tons for the entire vehicle though, the Flak Panzer 341 would likely have been somewhat quicker than the normal Panther variants. As for the crew, it would have been 4 or 5 men with 2 in the hull and the rest in the turret. Likely the commander would double as the gunner and the remaining 1-2 to two crew in the turret would act as loaders for the two cannons. The remaining crew members in the hull would perform the duties of driver and radio operator slash hull gunner if the final tank featured a hull MG. Had the issues been worked out, this vehicle would have been a well-armored counter to allied air power, but as with many designs from this period of German tank design, it was plagued with issues. Some of these included issues with venting the gases produced by the guns, as well as acquiring and engaging targets with an enclosed turret. The guns themselves proved to be an issue as well, with only a few of them ever being built and development being slow. Out of all these issues though, it was most likely the desperate need for tanks on the front line which meant that the panther hulls were much too precious to use for support roles. Some sources make mention of Daimler-Benz also being tasked with designing a turret for this vehicle. The Daimler-Benz concept supposedly would have a hydraulic drive for traverse and would feature 100mm of frontal armor with 40mm on the sides. However, this description, with slightly different armor thicknesses, is connected to another design known as the Flakpanzer 44. Not much information about this design is known, and no information on the 3.7cm Flak 44 guns it was apparently to be armed with has been found, so I can't really say what the truth behind it is. It's entirely possible that this was nothing more than another variation of the Flakpanzer 341. 
Overall, the Coelian was a decent design on paper, but realistically, there was no chance for this vehicle to reach the front lines in any impactful amount. Work was still done on the project up until 1945, although there was little to no chance of it ever contributing to a production design. As I mentioned earlier, part of the decision for this program to not proceed further was the switch from the 37mm cannon to a 55mm one. This design would see further development with several different concepts being created. The first was completed on October 23, 1944 and was presented alongside a 10th scale model of the vehicle. Unlike the previous design, this vehicle was limited to only 55 degrees of elevation compared to the 90 degrees of the Flak Panzer 341. Work continued on the project with two pairs of guns ordered to be ready for the prototypes along with a contract for a full scale wooden mock-up. A second design for this vehicle was submitted in December of 1944, this time from Krupp. Although similar in overall shape, this design is easily distinguished from the prior submission just from the cupola alone. This layout would also allow for an additional 8 degrees of elevation, allowing for 80 degrees of vertical movement. Armor for their design was planned to be 40 millimeters on the front, 20 on the sides, 30 millimeters at the rear, and 20 millimeters on the roof. Unlike the Coelian, this vehicle would feature a crew of six, with four of those in the turret. Two would act as loaders, with the other two being the gunner and commander. Reportedly, the mock-up was eventually completed and sent for presentation to the German Army Ordnance Office. Despite this work, though, the project was cancelled in early 1945, as it was not included in the emergency production program. One additional thing to note about this design was that there seemed to be plans to mount additional armaments along with the 55mm cannons. Proposals included the MG-151 20mm cannon along with MG-42 machine guns in varying numbers. These guns would be mounted above the 55mm cannons in the gun mantlet in one of these layouts. Two 20mm cannons with one MG-42, two MG-42s and one 20mm, or two 20mm without the MG-42. This would certainly give the vehicle a powerful armament for both air targets and ground targets, but with the project cancelled, it made little difference. Last but not least, we come to the biggest armament, that being the 8.8cm Flak 41 on a Panther hull. This project actually dates back to earlier than the other programs, with it originally beginning in 1942 as the Versuchsflakwagen or VFW for short. Although the VFW prototype you may have seen before predates the Panther, it was just that, a prototype. And so a later design using parts from the Panther was investigated. This had some benefits, such as standardized production of parts, but would ultimately fail for the same reason as the other Panther-based Flak Panzers. One thing that did separate this program from the others was that in October of 1942, Krupp was informed to include Panther II components in their design. This may have actually contributed to the project never reaching the testing stage as the previous Panther I hull they had been provided was returned. Work on this project seems to have continued up until early 1944, with Ryan Mattel also doing some work on a design of their own. Neither of these would amount to much though, with the project being stopped in January of 1944. This was partly due to other projects being more urgent, but also due to the fact that the role of this vehicle was already fulfilled by stationary 88mm flat guns, and smaller calibers were needed for direct support against ground attack aircraft. Another reason for this cancellation was the obvious need for Panther hulls for regular tank production, as well as the large amount of modification both Krupp and Rheinmetall's design would require. In the end, no Panther-based anti-air vehicle would be produced by Germany. Even though this was the smart choice on their part, and allowed for reusing of older Panzer hulls, primarily Panzer IVs, it did very little to slow down the Allied forces. With American factories churning out staggering numbers of aircraft alongside those made by Britain and the Soviet Union, any hopes of reclaiming the sky over German-occupied territories were long gone. Taking hulls away from regular Panther production for these new Flak Panzers would have done next to nothing about that anyways, and probably would have only resulted in Germany losing the war even faster, with less regular Panther variants reaching the front lines. Although the saying, too little too late, is often used in the context of mid to late war German vehicle projects, even that is being generous when referring to these pipe dream panzers. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. 
If you did, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks as always to my channel members for your continued support of the channel. If you like this video, I recommend checking out my videos on the Kugelblitz and the Panther 2, which you can find in my Cursed by Design playlist. You can also support the channel by checking out my merch store using the link in the description. I'll put a link there and in a pinned comment to the design I have which features the Coelian. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.